When I was learning to code, I remember feeling overwhelmed by the sheer number of questions and uncertainties I had on my path to becoming a developer. So in today's video, I'm going to save you all the headache and we're going to be answering the top 10 most common questions I get from aspiring developers. What's good team? Welcome to today's Q&A video. We've got lots of brilliant questions. There's 11 of them, a bonus one at the end. So be sure to stick around. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. And without further ado, let's get into the questions. Question one, probably the most common question that I get asked is where should I start learning? Now, brilliant question. Logically, it's the most important because if you want to learn programming, where do you start? And the answer that I'm going to recommend is the same place that I picked up coding, free code camp, absolutely brilliant, totally free, best place to dip your toes in the water with their interactive curriculums. Absolutely brilliant. It's basically a coding environment where they step you through different challenges. They give you explanations. And the two certificates that I'd recommend you try is the JavaScript data structures and algorithms course and the responsive web design course. Once again, those are the two that I did, speaking from my experience, worked brilliantly. If you decide you want a different resource after trying them, then by all means you can swap to something else. Maybe it's a paid bootcamp, maybe it's a qualification, but just to dive in, get your hands dirty, freecocamp.org, check it out. And just to compliment that, I'd also recommend checking out the web dev roadmap linked in the description down below. It's the resource I wish I had when I learned to program and for new developers, I'd recommend starting there. The free code camp curriculums are listed there. So that's question one On to the second, how much time should I allocate to learning? Another common question that I get asked, people want to know how much time I spent learning to program. For those unfamiliar, I taught myself to code and got a developer job in six months. Link to the video for more information about that there. But the moral of that story is that I spent about three to five hours daily, six to seven days a week across that six months programming. I just think that the constant regular exposure is absolutely brilliant if you really just want to spiral out of control in terms of your capabilities. Plus you build up a mad activity tracker in your GitHub, which I think is just great if you're looking to land that developer job. So answer to question two, three to five hours a day, six to seven days a week. That was me for six months to, you know, be a reasonable developer. Question three, brilliant question, do I need to memorize code? The answer is absolutely not. I think that instead what you should be doing is aiming for familiarization and cataloging your code in some kind of database that's indexed that you can easily access. Kind of like a library. There's so much programming knowledge you just literally will not be able to remember it all. So as you go through a tutorial on YouTube, for example, maybe it's one from the roadmap, you type out that code, you save it to your GitHub, you comment that code out, you're familiar with it, you know where it's saved. If you have a similar project in future that needs the same kind of skeleton, you can quickly access that, figure out what's going on and implement it into your new project without having to memorize it. And the best thing about this method is that whichever parts of that code base that you're now extremely familiar with, you use the most, you will just naturally remember them. So like you might save 10 things, actively use three things from your GitHub code repositories, and those will just become at the forefront of your mind and part of your you know, quick access memory or whatever the memorization is called. So don't memorize code, catalog it in a data bank or you know, squirrel that knowledge away in a way that's easily accessible, indexable, and then as you start to use more and more of it, you will just naturally you know, learn things that you don't have to look up. Question four, what programming language should I learn first? Now, for me, this depends on what your end objective is. If you're just looking to dip your toes in the water with programming, or maybe you just want an easy language that you can start writing some versatile scripts with, I'd recommend Python. Equally, that's the same answer if you wanted to get into data science. Python is the way to go. The learning curve is very shallow. The barrier to entry, very low. Python is a good entry. If you're looking to get into web development, full stack development, or maybe take it on as a profession, I'd recommend JavaScript. JavaScript has so many brilliant learning resources for beginners, and it is the most popular programming language in the modern era as of 2023. Everything on the internet is built with it. If you want to land a dev job, it is by far the most populated industry. JavaScript is the way to go. And if you want to get into it, really low level programming, operating systems, video games, Maybe try C or C++, but the barrier to entry for these languages is a little bit higher, so keep that in mind. Question number five, what are the best resources to learn to code? 
Another excellent question, and obviously my biased opinion is my YouTube channel and the web dev roadmap linked in the description down below. These are all just free resources based off of my learning experience, what I wish I had when I was teaching myself programming. But outside of that, I would say Free Code Camp, The Odin Project, the Full Stack Open YouTube, and Free Code Camp's YouTube channel. All of them are totally free resources. I think that there is so much material that you can just dive into. And then if you decide that this is something you really want to master, maybe a paid course or, you know, a qualification is something that you could follow it up with. Totally unnecessary, but just if you're looking to get your hands dirty, those are brilliant learning resources to dive in. And they're made specifically for beginner to intermediate developers. So a great place to start. After that, number six, we have what is the best method to learn programming? Now, lots of people have different learning styles, but for programming, I'm going to say interactivity. You need to get your hands dirty. Learning theoretically how to program just doesn't work and I do not advocate for that. I think that the best strategy is to gain some familiarization, move into a project, whether or not that's a YouTube tutorial, doesn't really matter. I actually really like YouTube tutorials if you can avoid tutorial hell. And I think that the best strategy is to go through a YouTube tutorial, leave comments in the code as you write it out with things that the tutor has said about sections. So. For example, leave a comment saying this function is specifically to do X, Y, and Z. As I kind of mentioned earlier, save this to a knowledge bank, a GitHub repository so that you can easily come back to it later, you know where it is. And when you revisit it, you've left a whole lot of comments for yourself so you know exactly what's going on. You don't have to revisit or rewatch that four hour YouTube tutorial. You can just dive in, implement it into your new project. And the one other thing I'd say to do is that when you do these tutorials, at the end, change them a bit. You know, the changes don't have to be huge. It could be a font size, a background color, change some of the CRUD logic, or you could just totally gut the project, leave the skeleton code and, you know, reinvent it entirely. This is going to be great for teaching you the foundations of whatever it is you're trying to learn. And then you learn how to implement that in a new context, which is just, you know, you can say that you've learned the technology. So I absolutely think that's the best way to learn to code. If there's anything I'm learning, that's what I do and I would recommend you try it too. Question number seven, when can I apply for jobs? Now, interesting question because technically you can always apply for jobs. There is nothing stopping you from putting in an application today, but if you wanna have the best success, I think that the criteria for entry is that you need to be able to do a simplified version of whatever it is the job that you're applying for does in their company. So if you're applying for a full stack developer job, you need to know how to build a simple full stack application. It doesn't have to be on the same scale as their full stack applications, but you need to be able to come into their code base and start modifying it from day one. And this is approximately the same level that you'll need to be at to have like a portfolio of projects, which is gonna give you the credibility you need to land that job in the first place. So I definitely say you wanna have familiarity to the point where you can come into a code base, start modifying it, making effective changes, and maybe write simplified versions by yourself. If you have a portfolio project with two or three of your own personalized projects, or maybe projects that you've done based on a tutorial and then adapted them, you're probably ready to land that job as well. That's number seven. For question eight, we have, what is the biggest mistake new developers make? Now this is a loaded question because there are so many mistakes, but the one that I'd say is the biggest is overwhelming themselves. If you're trying to teach yourself coding, where do you start? There's so many technologies. It's a constantly evolving industry. Talk about impossible to catch up. So, you know, one day at a time, one resource at a time, 90% of the paths into web development, for example, will get you to the same destination. So pick one resource, commit to it and do it properly. Forget about everything else until that resource or that learning step is completed and then move on to the next. Pick a roadmap, let it be your guide and don't overload yourself with the million things you have to do. The example is Free Code Camp's JavaScript Algorithms and Data Structures course. That's what I did first. I just committed to that one curriculum, burnt through it, didn't think about anything else. And then, you know, I could start overloading myself after that because I had a bit of confidence with all the million things I needed to do next. But if you're coming into it fresh off the boat, don't overwhelm yourself because it's just going to make the whole experience nightmarish. Pick one thing, stick to it, let it be your guide and keep it simple, stupid. Question number nine, controversial question. Are paid boot camps worth it? Now, the answer to this question, I think, depends on what kind of learner you are. I'm a fairly independent learner. I don't like following other people's stuff. 
I like to figure out and make my own executive decisions about what I want to know and what I think is the best. So for me, boot camps don't work because I don't like their progression. I don't, you know, agree necessarily with all of their curriculums. And I think that I like to be able to progress as quickly as I want on any particular piece of material. So if you can independently learn, I think there are more than enough free resources out there for you to dive in and go that journey alone. However, on the contrary, if you are someone that acknowledges that you need a bit of guidance, support, accountability on your learning journey, absolutely a paid boot camp is, is worth it for you. End of the day, your goal is to become a developer. It doesn't matter how you get there. Whatever works for you, works for you. The way that I would recommend doing this process to find out which is best for you is to start off free. If you find that hard, you can't keep yourself motivated, sign up for a boot camp, get that accountability, get across the finish line. Don't overthink it, just do what needs to be done. And if you have any questions, always feel free to jump into the Small James Discord channel, ask away, and you will get loads of support there as well. Question number 10, what are the best free online boot camps? So these are just free online boot camps. Uh, the ones that I am most familiar with are the Full Stack Open, the Odin Project, Free Code Camp, and CS50, and obviously the Small James YouTube channel. Uh, and I really like Free Code Camp because that's what I did. It's the most interactive in my opinion. However, all of them are brilliant. Try one, do the Free Code Camp probably first. If that doesn't work, move on to the next. All of them are great. They're free resources. And like I said, if they don't vibe, then do some research on the best online bootcamp in your area or maybe online and enroll for that and pay some cash money if you desire and the bonus question saving the best for last this is a funny question that i get a surprising amount how much math do i need to become a programmer and i would say the answer to this is you just need to be able to calculate your total compensation in an excel spreadsheet with some basic addition and see how ridiculously you'll end up getting paid uh, and that's about it so if you can do some addition subtraction multiplication division basic mathematics operations i think you'll be sweet Obviously, if you're getting into like computer graphics or whatever, then you'll need to know linear algebra and different industries like data science might have a higher mathematical requirement. However, for web development, you'll be sweet. Maths, I don't use it in my current day job and I don't think you will either. So don't let that be a barrier to entry for you. Dive in, get your hands dirty, get started today. That is our 11 questions that I get asked most commonly by new developers. If you found these answers useful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Stay tuned for the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Love that support and I'll catch you guys later. Peace. Are you learning to code but not sure where to start? Be sure to check out the Small James Web Dev Roadmap for a whole lot of free beginner resources or dive straight in with these videos.